It takes three easy steps to measure intraocular pressure quickly and accurately. Getting ready for use. First of all, take the protective cap off. Please make sure to disinfect the protective ring and vibrator rod before the first use of the tonometer and before each new patient. Please avoid penetration of disinfectant inside the device. How to activate the tonometer. Shortly press the on-off button to switch the tonometer on. When activated, the tonometer makes a beep and displays a moving arrow on its display, which is a signal of its readiness for measuring. The G or M symbol in the top right corner of the display stands for the current measuring mode. The indicator in the top left corner shows battery charge level. How to do the measuring. Ensuring proper patient's position. Patient's position is essential for accurate measuring results. To get the most precise measurements, you need to make sure that the patient's head is tilted back parallel to the floor. The eye gaze line makes up an angle of 45 degrees from an upright direction. You can use your thumb as a fixation point for the eye gaze. Stretching the eyelid. Stretch the upper eyelid of the patient's left eye with the index finger of your free hand, but do not press on the eyeball. The edge of the upper eyelid should be slightly above the limbus, showing a narrow strip of sclera between the edges of the limbus and eyelid. Hold the eyelid in this position during measurement. The doctor's position and placement of the measuring rod. Please make sure to disinfect the protective ring and vibrator rod before each new patient during the measuring process. The hand holding the tonometer should rest against the patient's forehead. Place the tonometer rod 2 to 3 millimeters above the ciliary margin of the eyelid. Several measuring spots are recommended, which are convenient both for the doctor and patient. The measuring procedure. Place the tonometer vertically down. Gently lower it by two or three millimeters until it makes a single beep. Do not push the device down too hard. The protective ring should be two to three millimeters above the eyelid surface while measuring. How to ensure the most accurate measuring results. Follow these simple rules to achieve precise measurements. Ensure a proper grip and gliding movements of the tonometer. Provide support for the hand to make your own movements more precise. The patient's gaze must be fixed at the test object. Place the tonometer strictly upright. Stretch the eyelid smooth, avoiding any folds. Place the tonometer rod properly and make sure it doesn't shift along the eyelid surface. The proper patient's position is ensured. The head tilted back horizontally. The gaze fixed upon the test object at an angle of 45 degrees. For accuracy self-check, do the measuring procedure again for the second and third time. The final steps and switching the tonometer off. Switch the device off by shortly pressing the button. Place the tonometer with the rod up and put the protective cap back on. Safety measures. Make sure there are no mechanical damages on the tonometer housing and rod. If you find any, do not use the device. Protect the tonometer from shock or impact. Make sure that no moisture gets inside the tonometer. Avoid exposure of the device to thermal shock or high temperatures. Possible mistakes. The patient's position is unsuitable for measurements. The result will be inaccurate if the patient's posture is incorrect. For precise measuring results, the patient's head must be tilted back parallel to the floor. The eyelid is stretched incorrectly. Possible mistakes. The eyelid edge is below the limbus and touches the cornea. The eyelid edge is too high above the limbus. For precise measurements, the eyelid edge must be one millimeter apart from the limbus. The measuring rod is placed incorrectly. The tonometer rod should not be too close to the ciliary margin or too far apart from it. 
The rod is sliding along the eyelid. The rod must not slide along the eyelid during measurement. The tip of the rod should be fixed. The rod must move only up or down. The tonometer is positioned incorrectly. The tonometer body deviates from vertical position. The measuring is only done when the tonometer is placed upright. The tonometer is lowered too far down. The protective ring touches the eyelid. The protective ring should not touch the eyelid during measurement, but be placed two to three millimeters above the eyelid surface. Maintenance. Do a routine inspection daily and check the tonometer functionality before each measurement of intraocular pressure. Check the tonometer functionality at least once a week using the tester. Also, checkups are needed after long work breaks, after dropping the device, and in any other cases when you doubt if it is still operational. To do this checkup, gently insert the device tip all the way down into the tester. Three measurements should be taken. The deviation from the value specified in the operating manual should not be more than two units. Clean the tonometer from dust and dirt when needed. If you see a dead battery symbol on the display, replace the batteries. How to train your measuring skills. To master the skill of IOP measurement, one needs 10 to 20 minutes of training on the tester or on finger pads. Additional information. To obtain the most reliable results and to fully appreciate all the advantages of transpalpebral scleral tonometry, you only need to master the use of this tonometer. Please read the operating manual carefully. Use the tester to carry out a few test checks of the tonometer's operation and make sure to observe all the recommendations described in the manual. Also, avoid constrained movements when handling the tonometer. Practice the tonometry process on testing samples until you do it automatically. Your measurement results shall become accurate enough only after you learn to freely operate the tonometer and manage to obtain consistent test results. While mastering the skill of stable tonometer usage, you need to select patients who have no history of ophthalmic pathologies, preferably young. You can self-check the results of your IOP measurements using Goldman's or Muklakov's tonometer. In case of significant discrepancies in the results, identify your mistakes as specified in the operating manual and adjust the measuring process accordingly. Follow these recommendations, gain the necessary skills, and become a confident user of the tonometer.